Back on Steel and Vance, self-checkouts have always made me a bit sad. My mom would drag me through the grocery store and we'd have this ongoing conversation with the grocery attendant. Right, and the there cashier. Were, yeah, you'd have like a relationship. It'd be like, Sonia, how you doing? What's going on? What's new, Jody? You know, whatever. And now it's like, beep, <laughs> beep. And, and it's yelling at me because I didn't put my thing in the bag at the right... I don't mind the self-checkout if it's simple, if I just have a couple of things, if you're going to weigh any sort of uh, vegetables or bananas, it's a pain in the butt, and then it's not working, and you're trying to find somebody, there's nobody around. This is what a lot of people say about the self-checkout. Don't really prefer it in Canada. I like the person-to-person -person contact. You can't say to a machine, have a good day. Right, exactly. We're on the same page. Uh, and uh, so is our next guest. David Moscrop is a political writer, and he has just written a big venting column for the Walrus, and he's joining us now. Uh, David, how are you? I'm great. I am, yeah, venting is a great word, because I was joking recently that I sort of turned 40, and this is my get off the lawn <laughs> moment, like screaming at the kids, get off your lawn. This is how I, this is how I do it. Uh, because we don't really have a big front lawn, so I get to scream about these things in, in a national magazine, which is which is a real privilege. Well, vent what's away. The, Tell us what do you think about in the self bonnet? check -out. Yeah. Well, so I picked up this concept from the writer and, and activist journalist Cory Doctorow, and I don't think I can say the word on on the show, <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll call it in crapification, but you can right. work out the the details for yourself. And he sort of argues that there's this thing in, in the technology world with platforms where they they capture an audience, they capture a market, they capture their suppliers, and then they can kind of do what they want. So they slowly make the service worse because they've got a, a captive consumer base and a captive uh, a supply supply chain. And that's sort of what's happening, I, I, you know, more broadly in the economy. And I sort of looked back and think, you know, self-checkout seems in some small part to be the tip of the spear here going back about 20, 25 years uh, where, where companies were shifting to this for quote unquote convenience, which is really not about convenience, but about cutting costs. And it's in many ways made the consumer experience worse and offloaded that labor onto us. Mm -hmm. and, and here we are 25 years later stuck with it. And it's just kind of drives me bananas. It's, I think it's, you know, irritating in and of itself, but I think it's also illustrative of a broader trend and in, in, uh, of, of in crapification. And it's proving to not really serve the purpose that it originally was meant to sort of trim back costs on because obviously people are, as I said before, taking the avocado that is the organic avocado and passing it off as the regular avocado. Like Stealing, in other words. Theft. Yeah. Shoplifting, Shoplifting. is a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of folks who uh, scan bananas, if you know what I mean. So this is the, the classic thing, is like the code for bananas, because bananas are typically cheaper than almost any other produce. So there's like yeah. people who are scanning in uh, items that aren't what what are, is on the belt, the bag, or they're yeah. just simply sticking things in their bag or sticking things in their uh, pockets, right? Like, the, so the, the theft has become a, a big problem. Of course, the stores pass those costs to the extent they can back on to consumers. But um, th some stores even walking back from self-checkout because of that. So it's interesting is that to the extent that, that they're dialing back on self-checkout, it's not because the people don't like it. It's because they're losing money on a lot of it. Uh, but the, the other response to that isn't to ditch self-checkout, but it's to increase surveillance and anti-theft measures, whether it's cameras or people watching you uh, or pens. There's places where if you've walked in, you could basically penned in once you walked into like a corral, like, like cattle. And um, I, this is a thing in Ontario you're seeing recently. And that's their way to try to combat this while cutting labor costs. Hold on, explain penned in. I've never experienced that. Have you? You just sort of shop and you don't have to scan anything. It's scanning as you go, I think. Oh, is that I think it? that's how it works. Well, I've never well, seen it. So there, is a, so there is that. There is that. In fact, so Amazon, you remember Amazon had this, yeah. their famous just walk out stores? Yeah. It was that like I you just walked in, you got it, <laughs> yeah. walked out. Pick up the thing. Well, it turns out those were, those were staffed. They were staffed by people in India who were reviewing transactions remotely. Wow. Uh, so they're they're moving back on that, and they're moving to actually a scan in your cart technology, where you're pressing, you know, you're walking around in your cart shopping, and you're scanning things as you go in the cart. And I think that's even worse because you know Linda mentioned earlier you're trying to find someone, you can't find anybody to help you fix the thing. Like, what do you do? Well, now you're going to be in the middle of the store in a cart. I don't think that's better, and you're still doing the labor. 
And so I, I think it's indicative of the same problem. But the pen thing is actually, you know, there's some stores here in Ontario, some Loblaws locations where you walk in and, and it's, it's like a pen. You walk into the, the self checkout area and it's this enclosed area with bars and even plexiglass that functions effectively like a corral. <laughs> which you know is a miserable shopping experience yeah. right to walk in and it's like you're walking into the big house because you want to buy some potatoes it's like you're going through customs <laughs> what do you got you know the thing that i'd I rather think go is through if, customs <laughs> right there you go if i'm gonna do all the work then i should get five percent off i should there should be some sort of an incentive for me to do the work so that you can lay off cashiers uh, that's what bugs me about self-checkout is it's everything's in it for the store and nothing's in it for me, the customer. Well, that's the rule, isn't it? And, and that speaks to the to the initial concept I was talking about, which is, you know, when the marketplace is captured by a handful of players, and I'm thinking particularly the grocery industry, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Right. Local mm -hmm. stores are dying. Mom and pop sh uh, stores are dying. Uh, if you're stuck, uh, in, you know, in, in, in the West Coast, you're sort of, you got Safeway, uh, you know, and then what, right? In Ontario, you've got Loblaws and Sobeys, and then what? You, like, we, Loblaws in this country dominates 33% of the market or something like that, or around 30% yeah. of the market. And Sobeys so you is really Safeway. have choices to shop around. Yeah. Yeah, right. And this is, this is the classic thing. It's like, well, if you don't like it, shop somewhere else. Like, there really <laughs> is no same somewhere thing. else. There really just is, is a subsidiary of someone else. And they're entry level jobs as a mother of a teen who's now entering into the workforce and taking it out of a grocery store and putting it at like the McDonald's. You used to work at McDonald's. Well, now everything's on an app and you're going in and you're pressing a bunch of buttons and you don't have the back and forth. And these jobs are important in society. They are. And, and the result isn't isn't typically easier or fast. My hypothesis is it's not actually easier or faster. No, and it's dehumanizing and alienating. Yeah. You know, you, you cut earlier to a customer who's saying they like the, the human contact. And, and look, we can make a critique about whether or not it's appropriate that a lot of our human contact in the contemporary society has been reduced to market transactions at a grocery store. That's a problem. Uh, but for a lot of people, like they like talking to people, they like being out in the day, having a quick chat and having a connection with another human being as, as the, as the, the, the interviewee said, you can't say have a nice day to a machine, mm -hmm. but we're, in, you know, constantly reduced to this in sh machine engagement on top of the fact that we spend all day in front of screens already or with our faces buried in our phones scrolling. Yeah. So, you know, it, I think it's deeply dehumanizing and alienating. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, before we let you go, uh, it is summertime, uh, first day of summer, in fact, and we've got the House of Commons. You know, they're rising, they're about to go off to their, you know, Cottages. ridings for the summer. And so I'm wondering, I've heard some talk about maybe Justin Trudeau quitting this summer. Do you think that's actually going to happen? I try not to prognosticate ever since <laughs> I was fairly sure the Liberals were going to lose the 2015 election. Uh, but... I wasn't wrong about that. I was just 10 years too too early. Uh, but I, I don't know. I was writing about that this week, and, and there is some speculation that he might go. Uh, you know, he's wildly unpopular. Most people want him to go. Uh, the party's not rebounding. Nothing they do is working. Like, they're throwing everything at the problem and, and the numbers just aren't moving. The conservatives are as popular as ever. There's one uh, hypothesis or, or, or one school of thought to which I'm semi-subscribed, which is if Trudeau stays, they'll lose, but then they can start fresh versus bringing someone in. You know, you bring someone in late in the inning in the innings and you're down by a bunch of runs and you know that person ends up looking like a fool right because they right. can't turn the game around and is that the same thing going to happen and is it going to be reminiscent of 1992 93 and kim campbell right and and something to get kim campbelled which i don't think uh is necessarily fair to someone's political career so there there is a reason for him to go down with a ship perhaps and the final thing is they may he may be the best chance they actually have of turning around anyway because he's such a strong campaigner so i don't i don't know if he'll stay or go but i don't think it really matters i think they're pretty much cooked at the, at the risk of being wrong you know a year and a bit from now i think they're pretty much cooked well here it is june and we're seeing uh you know federal election commercials already and we're not even in an election cycle wild. so uh no rest for the wicked David Mosgrub, always entertaining. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an awesome summer. You too. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Bye, pal. And David Mosgrub, we love having him on. I think yeah. he might be our most oft-had guest, he and Rob Shaw. Yeah, I think. Both, both of them. Yeah.
fabulous. Okay, coming up next on Steel and Vats, chips and white wine. That would be my perfect uh, meal, my perfect summertime snack. Yeah. Not healthy, though, so we're going to talk to someone who has some advice about eating in a healthy way, in a simple way. Got to get next. your greens on yeah. with, with Alyssa Bowman of Nourished. Oh, we got to get to our viewing party as well. Let's say hello to Maureen in Vancouver. And we have Sandy and Courtney. Hi, Sandy. Hey, Betty in Palm Desert. Way to watch us in Palm Desert. I love that. Love it. And also, well, that's a delicious uh, dessert that. she's got. Peter, Peter and, and Victoria. Victoria, thank you so much for watching. I'll let you know who's the winner later on in the show. It's going to be viewer's choice at any BC restaurant. Can you imagine? So fun.